So, welcome back to sixth week uh, lecture. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, in lecture 26, as you have seen, that we have been talking about performance review, which happens after the performance appraisal is over. So, as a part of the performance management process, once we complete the appraisal of the individuals, then we are going to review the performance in terms of identifying his strength and weaknesses, looking at his areas of improve, uh, improvement and see what kind of action plan can be made. So, in order to uh, identify these kind of things, what we do? We go for reviewing the performance of the individual, where the supervisor sits across the table with the subordinate and discusses it thoroughly. So, as a part of this ongoing discussion on performance review, we have discussed some of the things related to performance review. Now, in this lecture, basically we will talk about the process, the review process that how review happens. right? So, when we are going to uh, discuss the process, we will discuss in detail that how this performance review process that takes place between the subordinate and the supervisor is carried out. It, uh, it assumes significance and importance in the sense that when you are going to review and discuss the performance with the subordinates, subordinates have to look at it in certain ways like how it is going to help me, how it is going to uh, improve my performance, what are my strengths and weaknesses. Similarly, what kind of rewards are going to be there. So, there are a lot of questions that subordinates might be having in their mind related to this review. Okay. So, it is very, very important that when you are going to look at this review process, we should be careful and follow the process thoroughly. Now, look at this. Okay. What, what do you find here? Now, there are a lot of confusions in the mind of the subordinates when it comes to the review process. Okay. What will happen? How it is going to be looked at? Right? Uh, am I doing the right kind of things? Okay. What, uh, whatever I am doing, is it supposed to be done by me? Okay. In what way I am going to be rewarded? In what way I am going to improve my performance? So, there could be a lot of questions that is being asked, uh, that could be asked during this review by the subordinates. Now, if you look at some of these images, which shows employees and now if you look at the, uh, some of the questions that is raised by them. I mean, these are a set of questions or sample of questions that I have uh, tried to identify, which could be taken up in the review and then these can be discussed at length and that is why we have another lecture on discussion there on after this 27th lecture. So, in this lecture basically we are going to consider on the process. Okay. So, some of the questions that employees might be having in their mind related to whether they are doing the right kind of things or not, what I am supposed to do. I'm, I'm, basically, this question relates to whether I have been doing things the way I am supposed to do or not okay. and whether I will be uh, doing that okay, uh, properly or not. So, how well I am required to do it. Okay, or say, what do you think of my performance so, when it comes to you? Because supervisors are going to give feedback about your performance, so uh, they might ask these kind of questions, and then uh, whether it, it is going to be linked with the reward that we'll discuss later on. So there are a lot of questions uh, related to this, like how it is going to improve my performance. So there could be a lot of questions which could be answered during that the review discussion and analysis that will that will take subsequently in the lectures. right? So, in order to answer these kind of questions, we have to see that when we start the review process, okay, uh, it means that now the annual appraisal or semi appraisal or whatever the process is, is complete. So, once the appraisal process is complete, then we are going to review the process, uh, review the performance of the employees. right? Some of the things that is very, very important that when you are going for review, right? is that before when you uh, start the review process, you have to look at some of the preparations that you need to make, because the review session is very, very important for both for the employee and the supervisor. right? So, when you are going to uh, take up this issue of uh, review with the employees, you there are certain things that you need to consider beforehand. like scheduling it well in advance. So, you need to communicate with the employees when this review is going to happen. Right? 
So, make sure that it is not going to be too far off. immediately after the review, it, it is better to have it right. Then based on your convenience and uh, the convenience of the employee, you are going to schedule it, make sure that the timing that is set up by both of you are correct in the sense that both of them are free, relaxed mentally and they are in a position to discuss the performance right and make sure that it is a natural selection right and most most important is that, that that is done in confidence and make sure that it is confidential also because you are not going to discuss it with others right so when you are going to review the performance of employees okay so you are going to select a location which is preferred by both it could be your room okay where privacy could be maintained right so second uh, selected natural selection okay uh, which is free from all kind of barriers and uh, say obstacles. So, it is very very important to go for these kind of things. Then uh, you develop an agenda for the review that what you are going to discuss in the review okay, that is very important. Now, you have the performance record of the individual. So, based on that you prepare agenda and then you communicate this agenda to the employees so that employee agrees okay, these are the points on which we are going to have this review and further discussion. Right. So, agreeing on content by both the stakeholders, both the employee and supervisor is very very important. So, it is a good idea to prepare an agenda based on the performance of the employees by the supervisor which could be taken up for review at a convenient time and location by the employees. Now, how much time you are going to devote on the review that is another issue ok. Depending upon the nature of job the person is doing right. If it is very subjective uh, then it will take more time and assessment also takes more time, but if it is very objective then you can finish in 15 to 20 minutes otherwise you can go on discussing depending upon how much uh, employees are interested to take it further or really want to explore it uh, in depth about their performance. So, accordingly you can see that you can make variations from 15 to 45 minutes it all depends upon uh, both the stakeholders the employees and the supervisor. Then once this review is there then you are going to write your comments. Okay. You also give examples ok, this is what was expected, this is what was not expected, this is what you did, this is what you, this is what you are not supposed to do right. So, you are going to give lot of examples during the review process to explain them and then prepare these things that what you are going to ask right. Then you also ask that ok, uh, if there are any issues then how it could be taken up further right. So, you also talk about adjustments related to performance, related to goals and standards, related to the processes are even related to the competencies that individualize that would help them to look at it in a different way right. And then when you are going to review the performance look at the performance record and find out what are the areas where the people have done exceedingly well right. So, it is very very important to see that you take up those areas where the performance has been very good ok. So, the idea here is to start with a good note right. So, when you are going to prepare for the review session after the performance appraisal process is over make sure that you are going to have these things in your mind before you start the review. Now, there could be some options that is available to you right. For example, find out who are the good performers among the subordinates ok, what kind of reward ok could be given to them right, see what kind of uh, uh, say development plan you have for them you can also communicate to them before you are to go for review right or before you meet them face to face right. So, actually these would help employees to prepare themselves for a better review right and it is always good to give them a hard copy ok. So, this is look at your performance this is the hard copy of re, uh, your appraisal which we are going to discuss right. So, sometimes what you can do you can review and discuss together or sometimes you keep on preparing the document to take up one, one by one each document right and then you keep on discussing it. So, there could be lot of options that could be exercised by the supervisor, but make sure that physically you are ready mentally you are ready to discuss it you have communicated this make them ready to go for this kind of exercise and then you have all the documents with you related to the performance which you want to discuss and also give a copy of these documents to the employee so that he understands ok. These are the things that is to be discussed. Now, if you look at this process ok, when we are talking about 
performance review so the first stage is preparation stage okay where the employee and supervisor both come prepared to disc to review the performance and then later discuss okay as a part of the discussion they also analyze that we'll talk later that they try to find out why this level of performance was achieved okay so if you look at this process review discussion and analysis sometimes it takes place simultaneously sometimes you simply review the performance and then you communicate it the idea is to give employees information about their performance but that is not enough you also discuss about the performance okay get their feedback you give your feedback and then uh, as a part of this process then you are going to analyze the performance right then at the second stage actual review happens okay where both of them sit across the table discuss it in a convenient natural location agreed upon by both in terms of content and what is going to be discussed okay and finally from this you move to discussion phase after the review okay the third phase okay after the discussion you talk about the development plan for the next cycle of the performance okay so that is how we are going to proceed right once you are ready with uh, this uh, preparation you move to the next stage and that is you look at the role that is to be taken up by both the supervisor as well as the employees right for example uh, you look at the report of the employees that is to be prepared based on the information okay and make sure that all the supporting evidence is available to you before you go further review right then performance appraisal as i told you has to be complete, completed before you proceed to this process then you communicate this to the next level managers your immediate supervisor and also the hr for approval okay so this is the performance level and then we want to go for the review right and uh, once you complete this process you schedule the review and provide your evaluation right from the employer side what are the preparations that is to be made okay they also need to prepare themselves by looking at their performance whether they have gone for self appraisal or other appraisal process so they are ready with their evaluation part right they also come prepared with all the information which they claim to be related with the performance that is equally important okay and then they are also supposed to provide feedback to the supervisors about their performance right i make sure that you have a copy of the performance record you also need supporting documents to support your performance right and then you are going to work on the development plan in consultation with your supervisor based on this information okay so that is why it is going to be a joint activity right moving further now if you look at this you are going to conduct the appraisal session so appraisal when you are going to conduct the appraisal session this is very very important right now if you look at this the there are two people one supervisor and manager who is uh, basically part of the appraisal process sorry re review process so during this review session what actually happens that the manager is going to discuss with the supervisor there is no interruptions you have a open conducive environment in the sense that both of them come out with an open mind right this is very very important okay and try to be as accurate transparent and objective that as possible and you create an environment which is conducive to this kind of discussion so neither the supervisor nor the subordinate become either aggressive or defensive okay while discussing the performance or while going through the review then to start with when you are going to really conduct the second stage then make sure that you discuss them that why you, this kind of performance review is required 
what is the purpose, how it will be carried out okay. and it is related to both of us because your performance also contributes to my performance okay. and I have also contributed to your performance. So, it is mutual, it is mutually in not exclusive, but inclusive in the sense since both of them have contributed to each other's performance you tell them that to some extent I am also responsible are contributed to your job and you have also contributed. So, let us discuss that what has happened in terms of performance right. Then you look at the performance record and move further you ask the individual okay, what are your achievements right, what are the things that you have done which make a significant difference in terms of contributions systems and processes or whatever you did and what was your learning experiences. So, the individual you allow speak to the individual during the risk, uh, this review process. So, that he will be in a position to defend himself depending upon the data that you have at your hand right and another way that you can look at it that okay, you start with good performance and this gradually move to those areas where the people have not been able to perform well right and once you have listened to him looked into his uh, statement then you give your rating okay, because uh, you uh, once performance uh, data is available you can see that how well are um, um, he has done the job uh, where you agree with the uh, supervisors where you do not agree with the supervisors. So, okay. Similarly, as a supervisor you also see that whether you are agreeing to the performance that has been achieved by the super, uh, subordinate or not okay. and what are those areas where you differ with them. Okay. So, both of them are going to look at it okay. the agreement and differences on those performance standards and criteria which is going to be a part of your evaluation process right and then you ask questions you ask them open questions right. So, to better understand why did it happen and once this is complete then at the next stage you are going to talk about what are the areas which he thinks that needs improvement okay, and how it could be linked with your career growth and development right. So, once this review process is complete you are going to summarize the review and then you give a message to him that okay, what is to be done further right and then you start uh, you end it with a uh, thank you note that is very good thank you very much I have reviewed your performance and I believe in you you can better perform. So, that would give lot of confidence if you believe in himself and if you communicate these kind of things. So, motivate and see that the person is encouraged further to perform well. Okay. So, these are the things that could be taken up at the performance level. So, during the review meeting basically that is the process that is how we go about it right we have been talking about it. So, you start with opening as I told you okay. he arrives with an open mind you welcome him describes the process ask for his assessment right. Then he comments upon his assessment and gives examples second stage. Then the supervisor identifies areas for agreement with examples he also provides rationale and examples and he also looks into the differences that he has with the supervisor. Okay. So, and the supervisor responds asks questions to clarify. Then after that you both of the you agree and talk about your career interest and development activities and finally, what you do you surprise the core messages right staff member is going to listen to you response and thank supervisor for the feedback. So, okay, so, that is how this is the entire process that is that that is related to what you call the second stage and now that is how it goes up. Then when you are giving examples that try to be more descriptive like uh, you talk about goals and expectations right. So, look at the quality quantity date performance right because performance is measured in this way and you also have a timeline for looking at the performance. Okay. Look at uh, the level of uh, achievement that he has made in terms of quality and quantity of performance within a given time frame based on factual data right and you also describe the specific objectives okay. give examples of work samples right projects incidents that is covered by him. Then look at the behavioral competencies which could be related with this okay. that how each competencies have contributed and what way it is connected with the performance. Okay. And then you also use certain phrases okay, uh, 
this could be taken up from the appraisal wizard because this is very very important there are certain phrases and terms that could be used which is basically related to specific in this incidents okay, related to you right okay this is what the way should have been done uh, yes this is a very commendable job that you have done and you have those competencies which is required for this and finally you give your comment in form of summary about the level of performance okay and by highlighting the major progress that have been made uh, the major achievements that is made by the employees okay and then it also contain the core messages what actually exactly want to communicate to the employees after the review process is over right now what is more important is but the basically through this review process you are going to look at the performance level of the employees right so performance level could be categorized on the basis of whether he is a top performer in terms of your assessment in a sense that yes he has expected all, uh, the performance standards right he has contributed much more than it was expected from him okay uh, he is very uh, forward thinking per person very proactive he always looking for improvement okay and he is independent problem solver so if you find that these categories are available they are going to uh, say that yes he is one of the top performers in your review then the next level if he is meeting your expectations in all areas okay most of the areas except in some areas okay and yes he is doing beyond what is being asked taking initiatives to solve problems okay and he is also looking for uh, growth and development then you say that yes he is a valued employee the next level so, so the first level is going to be the top performance on the rank then next level is going to be a valued employee then if that is not then you see that is yes, he has not been able to perform well so basically the idea is to also ensure that you are able to identify top and valuable performers in the organization or in your department right so we have talked about some of the issues here now let us summarize it like you need to create an climate of openness and mutuality where you each one have respect and dignity for each other have trust and confidence in each other this discussed in an open environment right the management and the supervisor subordinate both have a very especially the management has a very uh, empathetic attitude it means that he is able to feel and understand the employees from their perspective not their, uh, his, his own perspective right and both of them participate with an open hand it is very very important so there is no inhibition to participate in the review process either from the employer side or the supervisor side right and this is a dialogic relationship it means that it should be in the form of dialogue right from both the parties so through this dialogue they are going to clear lot of issues able to establish rapport and build trust with each other and the supervisor should not make any personal comments on the personality or the behavior of the employees unless it is related to the job right so they should only focus on those behaviors which have contributed to the performance okay are those behaviors which have not contributed to the performance so they have to uh, look into those critical incidents which have been effective or not effective which could be related to good performance or with problems and difficulties and during the review process please don't discuss about the salary and the rewards later on you can talk about it but once here you are basically looking at the performance of the individual and you are talking to the employees regarding his performance in the form of review so the third level of performance is developing see we talked about top level and valued employees at the third level we have developing and requires improvement means third level you have someone who is not able to perform well up to the expectations right at the desired level it means that he needs to develop okay he is not able to meet the expectations or he is maybe new or he does not know how to perform the job he needs more training and learning in order to perform job effectively so there could be number of reasons because of which you think that yes this person need lot of improvement in order to perform his job very well right so this is this could be a part of a summary but make sure that when you are going to discuss or review the performance of the individual you are going to take care of those enabling conditions which help you to go for a accurate review right and finally you have uh, people who are not able to improve performance it means they have 
uh, not been able to meet expe ex uh, performance expectations or standards and they have not been able to meet targeted goals right it means that they are lacking either knowledge and skill or they are not motivated to are motivated enough or have the capability okay so if that is the situation then you have to think what needs to be done right with what kind of interventions can be planned for them to ensure that they are able to develop those uh, knowledge and skill base which is going to help them to perform well right similarly you also need to ensure that what kind of uh, things need to be done okay which will help them to improve their performance because uh, probably they are not able to recognize how it is going to affect the performance of other people right and they don't make any changes okay as has been required by the management it means that even despite reminders you are not able to perform well and you have not able to recognize how your performance has not been able to meet the standard or in what way it is could it could affect the performance of the other people okay so these people even if they are given reminders they are not in a position to see that how it is going to affect the performance of others or their own performance and what could be the consequences okay it means that they are not going to follow the norms and values of the organization their core values okay and whatever they are doing okay is not linked with their own goals or objectives as well okay it means such people require immediate interventions to improve their performance to bring it to the baseline forget about improving their performance so once you are able to complete your performance review probably you will be in a able to, uh, in, as a supervisor you will be in a position to identify in what category of performance people are going to be put into whether they are going to top level or valued employees okay then you have people who can improve their performance are those who despite reminders have not been able to link their performance to the goals they have not been motivated enough to do it or they either they don't have the capacity so they require immediate attention okay so you start with requiring immediate attention then you think that what kind of development plan can be for for those who are developing like they can go for coaching and mentoring then valued employees how you can further improve their strong points and the top performers then how they can sustain this level right so this with this discussion uh, on performance level uh, what i'm going to provide you a template which basically talks about how we are going to take it right so when you are going to discuss performance basically there are certain things that you are going to write down here like the position okay position the year or uh, year the period that you are going to cover what is the review date and time okay Uh, what is the location okay how much time is required time in present position and what is the tenure of the employees in the service and how much years he has expended in that particular job and who is the reviewer so you are going to provide the basic information related to the individual then the reviewer and then uh, the discussion starters you start with good performance okay and then you move to discuss other things right so like uh, you say that okay uh, what you did what that was best what was your uh, better achievements then you talk about things that you did not like or things that you liked it okay and what elements of your uh, role interest you uh, most it means that what you enjoy doing and what you don't enjoy doing okay so what are the things a support system that was available to you i think that there are certain things which were not available which could have made your performance very good, good right so after uh, going through this this you just start the discussion then you ask them to rate on certain level of competencies which could be part of the self assessment okay and then uh, like uh, your, uh, these are basically behavioral uh, competencies like your communication how efficient you are whether you have been able to meet the targets or not effectiveness in terms of your relationship with your supervisors colleagues subordinates peers okay your punctuality and attendance and whether you follow rules and regulations or not these are some of the examples is not exhaustive list that is given here so you're going to rate yourself okay uh, then you see that what kind of improvement you require whether it is average or it is very good or whether it is excellent okay so you identify your best areas of achievement and then also identify what are those areas where you have not been able to do well then moving further you you look at the goals on the action plan okay so 
what you did in order to achieve your goals, right? What kind of support system was available? What was the outcome within a given time frame that you have been able to achieve, and what progress you have made, right? And then supervisor is going to comment upon it. Okay. And then you have to see that supervisors also agree to this proposition, whatever you are saying, right? So whether you have been able to accomplish the goal, or whether you have made good progress, or only some progress, or not no progress at all. At all. So suppose one of the goals that you had in your previous cycle was. In, uh, Okay, improving your leadership quality. So, see what extent you have been able to do it and what you did in order to reach to this particular goal, right. But did you get any training on leadership or not, right. Have you been able to achieve this whether, uh, within a given time frame, okay, and what kind of support system was available to you. So, you are going to write about on this and then see on this uh, like whether you have been able to accomplish this or not, the, or the extent to which you have been able to accomplish it or not has to be discussed. And then look at say uh, another goal, right? Another behavior competent behavioral competencies, right? Say second goal. Similarly, you look at each and every goal that you have, and for each and every goal, you look at the kind of action that you have made. What kind of support system was available? What was the outcome of that particular action? Whether you have achieved that particular action within a given time frame or not? And then you are going to put your signature, and then supervisor also look at it what you have done then he makes his comment right now if you look at the, the right side of this based on this you can see whether on each of these goals okay look at these templates whether your performance was below average satisfactory very good excellent or outstanding right so the idea here is that when you are going for review you are going to look at your performance and then you see that based on this kind of template or you can have other templates also that is not a question. Look at each and every goal or performance standards and see what happens to them and the extent to which and then you average it out then you can see your overall performance. right? So, once you look at your performance and supervisor uh, goes for the review he can see very clearly what you have achieved or what you have not achieved. What are the areas of agreement, what are the areas of differences okay? and then once that is done you have been able to identify uh, your development plan then you move to further discussion right and that is how this performance review move to the next stage that is what we know as performance review and discussion thank you very much